And now the Greek of the week. So I decided to use Luke 10, 35 uh, this week, which is from the parable of the Good Samaritan. And so the, the Samaritan has picked up the man who's been mugged and taken him to the inn. And, and we join the story in progress. Kai epi tain aurion ek balon edoken duo denaria. Okay, so and on the morrow, on the, on the next day, on the tomorrow, um, casting out, so I'm, I think this is the coins. He's got two coins here. Uh, one coin is a denarius. Uh, a denarius is about one day of, of wage, a, a worker's day of wage. Um, so he's, he's giving two um, days wage to take care of this man, this complete stranger, right? He's showing who the neighbor is, casting out. Strange word, but I you know, flick flick the coin. <laughs> Not quite sure what to make of that. But um, balo ballistics, ballistic missiles, uh, are cast missiles that are cast. So ek balo is the word here. Um, the one lambda uh, tells us it's not in the present system. It's it's a uh, aorist. It's the second aorist. In the second aorist, balo loses one of its lambdas. Double lambda words do this all the time. Uh, when they lose, when they go out of the present system, they lose a lambda. So this is uh, aorist. Uh, it is active. It is a participle. Own is the very first participle ending most Greek students learn. In my outrageous song that I didn't come up with, Lu own usa on. So own is the nominative masculine singular um, participle uh, ending. So this is aorist active indicative uh, aorist active participle. Nominative masculine singular from ekbalo, throwing out. Um, it's nominative because it, it, the one throwing it out is the Samaritan, who is the su subject here. We, he's in a previous verse mentioned the he here is the Samaritan. And on the morrow, casting out, he gave two denaria, two denarii, so two days wages, the dynamic duo, duo two. Um, Etoken is a form that is very common in the New Testament. It's one, you know, if you're going to waste some, if you're going to spend some memory capital, this is a form worth memorizing. Etoken is the aorist of didomi, which means to give. Um, how do I know it's aorist? Well, I don't know. I've memorized it. So in the present system of, of me verbs, in the present system of didomi, it has a did, domi. Um, do, do, a donation. It's did, oh, me. Um, the do here is what clues me to it being did me. Um, the augment has me thinking, well, this could be aorist, but the fact that it's lost the di on did, oh, me, it tells me it's not present. We've left the present building. We're not in the present system anymore. Um, now, kappa, I normally associate with the perfect tense, but this is one of the weird things about a whole lot of me verbs. Um, me verbs often will do a kappa in the aorist. I'm sorry, I didn't make this language. So I just know, I've memorized it. And there are, there are reasons for it, that this is aorist, active indicative, third singular from didomi. Now that new with an epsilon in front of it is very often a movable new, throw it away. Epsilon is a very common third person singular past tense ending, in this case, aorist, uh, active indicative ending also. So aorist, active indicative, third singular from didomi. And on the morrow, taking it out, uh, he gave two denarii. He flicked two denarii at the the in to the innkeeper. The article never lies. This is a a dative. Uh, I would say masculine singular. I'm guessing it's masculine. Uh, the form could also be neuter. But anyway, uh, the innkeeper. This is dative. It's not a um, it's a it's a third declension noun, uh, and so it doesn't it doesn't have the nice little ending that I learned. You know, in the first you know the second week of Greek, maybe even. Um, so, but this isn't the Iota, you can see the Iota hanging down for dear life here as a subscript and the Iota here, Iota is a common feature of the dative singular um, uh, across the declensions. Okay, so the, the, a declension is a group of like-minded nouns that behave similarly. So he gave two denarii to the innkeeper and he said, aping an aorist, aorist active indicative, notice the N, N in both cases is third singular active indicative. So aping an aorist, it's aorist, active, indicative, third, singular, from Lego. Capital letter. Okay, so this is a quote. Help, help me, Rhonda, yeah. So to pandoke kai apen epimelethete autu kai hotian. Okay, help. 
This is a command. It's from uh, Epimelo, uh, Epimeleo, I think. Um, and um, the theta eta has me thinking eris passive. And I have this, I'm sorry, I just have this memorized. It's a second person singular imperative ending. I, ha I have a song, I didn't, make, I didn't come up with it, but I have a song for the second person singular imperatives in Greek. It's lu e, lu u, lu son, lu sai, lu the t. This is the the t, eris passive imperative. So this is an eris passive imperative second singular from Epimeleo. And it basically says, be helping. <laughs> I don't know why actually it's, uh, Eris passive. It could be an opponent or something like that, but it means basically help this guy, help him. Uh, this is a genitive of root idea. Help, help is a verb that wants a genitive object, not a not an accusative one. A lot of particulars to learn when you're learning a language. When you're learning to speak it, you just kind of get the your subconscious gets the flow. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time um, to um, to learn it that way most of the time. So we've got to cram it by memorizing stuff. Um, although I'm doing it inductively, so anyway. So epi malefeti autu kai hotian. So on is a little bomb. It's an untranslatable conditional participle. In itself, it doesn't really have a translation, but the ever comes from it. The ever is brought on by the on. The on makes everything more contingent. Everything, it's a little bomb, throws everything up in the air. Hati means, in and of itself, means something like whatever. It's a strange, fun little word, ho t. The word is hostis. Hostis is two words that have been shoved together. Hos, which means who, and tis, which means someone. And so you take who, someone, it's whoever. Um, and this is the neuter. Now, normally with hos, tis, it's one word. But when it gets to the neuter singular, so ha is neuter singular, and t, is neuter singular. When it gets to here, if it had put them together, it would have looked like hoti, which means because or that. And so typically Greek Bibles and Greek textbooks, when they get to the neuter, they separate the word, they separate it into its two component parts so you don't confuse it with hoti. Now, of course, in the original Greek, it was all shoved together in scripti scriptio continua. So, you know, if you look at an ancient Greek manuscript, there are no spaces between the words. So it's this is something that people who print Greek do to help us modern English people and other uh, uh, languages too, other Germans and French, oh my. But um, basically it means whatever. But with the on here, subjunctive is coming, subjunctive is coming. And we're not surprised here. Pros da paneses, uh, to find a subjunctive here. See, O, A, S, A. Well, normally, this would be epsilon, iota, sigma in the indicative, but it's been fried. The epsilon's been fried to an eta, and the iota stayed around hanging on for dear life as a subscript. So this is, in fact, a subjunctive. With the sigma there, it's an aorist subjunctive, aorist active subjunctive, second singular from pros dapanao, I think. Um, now, uh, in the indicative, a sigma indicates future. But in the subjunctive, a sigma indicates aorist. I'm sorry, if I say these things over and over and over again, eventually you'll say, oh yeah, um, uh, this, is a, if this is the first time you're watching one of my Greek videos, it's like, ah, anyway, but um, Greek, is a, it's a language. So, um, uh, so help him and whatever you should spend, I myself, so ego is a um, little oomph. It's not really needed because apodoso, that omega there means I, it entails I in apodoso, I will repay to you, soy. Um, so, ego ento uh, epan erkesthai me apodoso soy. Um, I myself will repay you is the backbone of this clause. Um, uh, the I is not needed, so it adds oomph. I, whatever you should spend, I will repay you. Um, and then apodoso, here, this is indicative, so the sigma in the indicative indicates future. The sigma in the subjunctive indicates aorist. The sigma in the indicative indicates future. Um, so this is a future. Um, from the so, just looking at these last two letters, I know it is, um, well, I don't know, uh, but I'm guessing it is a future active indicative first singular. What's it from? Well, do is didomy, 
the aorist of didomy or some other stem of didomy. It's just, I know didomy has a di in the present system. There's no di, so I know it's not present. In this case, it's future. So this is apodidomy, to repay, to give back, as it were. So this is era, I'm sorry, it's future. Uh, it's future, active, indicative, first singular from apodidomy. Okay. I myself will repay you. Um, when will he do it? Ento uh, eponerkes thy me. Uh, in the to return me. I call this an infinitive game. With an infinitive game, an, an accusative becomes, quote unquote, the subject of it. It's actually an accusative of reference, I think. Um, but uh, we have to kind of play with it. It's in the to return me. But we put it in our Greek computer and it comes out when I return. Me, me becomes the subject and return becomes the verb. An ento infinitive is a temporal infinitive game, a timing game. And with ento, it's a present timing. We, we use, we translate it with while. These are, these are the rules of the game. I mean, when you learn a, a new game, um, you know, you have to read the instructions sometimes, um, unless you have a friend, hopefully, who has already read them. But the instructions for this is while I uh, return or when I return in the to return me. Epon ercus thy, the six out of the seven infinitive forms end in I, and this is one of them, so it is an infinitive. The st has me thinking middle or passive infinitive, but this is erkomai, which is omai, oh its deponent. Uh, and so this is eponerkomai, uh, which is a deponent verb. So it is a, a present, because those are the letters of the present system, erk, erko, uh, erk, erking is present. Um, so it is a present deponent infinitive from eponerkomai. So putting it all together, and on the morrow, throwing out, he gave two denarii to the innkeeper, and he said, help him, and whatever you should spend, I myself, when I return, will repay to you. Quite a verse. Uh, that's why I picked it, because it's a fun one, very complex, lots of fun little Greek stuff. This has been the Greek of the week.